And the LX600 is a really exciting product for me personally. I've been a fan of the LX200 for many years, long before I started with Mead, as many other amateur astronomers have been. And we continue to improve upon the platform for a number of years, but no time in our history have I been so excited about it because we've been able to add Starlock to the LX600. Now, just to go back, when you said you talked about the LX200, those were your classic fork-mounted telescopes that you've had for many, many that years. That we've built a lot of our reputation on. So there's a lot of advantages to a fork-mounted instrument, especially for people like myself that like to do astrophotography. Well, and the best thing about it is the fact that there's no meridian flip. You could try you could track through the best part of the sky without ever having to worry about the telescope stopping, flipping over to the other side of the meridian and continuing to track. Which you have to do with most German equatorial mounts. That's correct. All right, now, so you've got Starlock on this. Does it work exactly the same way as it the works ex It works exactly the same way, except for this also works when it's in LTAS mode. The wedge is an available option. We actually sell the wedge with the telescope and without it. So you can actually get these in several different configurations. But the Starlock's going to work in Altaz and in polar mode. So you get the same ultra high precision pointing and full time auto guiding regardless of the configuration. All right, now most astrophotographers wouldn't think of doing long exposure photography in Altaz mode, but I suppose in this day and age where people take relatively short exposures and then add them all up to a final image, the little bit of field rotation that would happen as you track in Altaz mode really becomes insignificant when you add the images together. That's right, Dennis. We've actually, in testing, been able to get really great results on deep sky objects that I never dreamed possible just by having the auto guiding feature run in all mode. Taking 30 to 45 second exposures is quite easy. And with today's day and age, when people are taking a lot of short exposures, you actually get a lot of depth and detail in a deep sky object that yeah, most people never thought possible. And of course, the advantage of having it set up in all mode is it's very simple. You don't have to do the polar alignment. And you get one additional benefit with the Starlock in that you get light switch style uh, alignment. In the sense of? In the sense that it will do a, a hands-off automatic alignment, automatically aligning two alignment stars and getting you aligned. Oh, for the go-to pointing. That's correct. So you get the precise go-to capability. And how, how good is that? Down to an arc minute. Down to an arc minute on the pointing. That's correct. In our ultra high precision mode, it's down to one arc minute pointing. One arc minute. That'll get the object centered on any chip I can think on of. On any chip around. All right. And of course, for the people that want to go the full equatorial route and set this up on a wedge, looks like you've got a new wedge here. We do. We wanted a perfect platform to support our LX600. So we redesigned our old Ultra Wedge, and we now we have our X Wedge. This is all CNC machined aluminum out of air, aircraft grade aluminum. And as you can see, quite a bit more sturdy. We estimate about 30% sturdier than our old Ultra Wedge. So tell me a little bit about the optical tube assemblies that are available in the LX600 series. Well, first we adapted the F8 ACF optical tubes from our LX800 and added them to the LX600 to offer performance that nobody else has in this price range. And we offer a, a 10, 12, 14, and 16 inch F8 optical tube assembly. F8. And what about focal reducers? We have an F5 focal reducer that's available that's baffle mounted so for the widest possible field of view to illuminate even the largest sensors. All right, so you can use them in F8 and F5. And I know there's a couple of other new features that have been added into these tube assemblies, especially about the focuser. You want to tell me a little bit about that? This is our 7 to 1 dual speed internal Crayford styled zero image shift focuser. All right, so people know about Crayford focuses, but internal is a little bit surprising. Most people would expect to see a Crayford focuser back here. What's going on in the scope? One of the problems with movable mirror primary telescopes is image shift. You actually achieve radial movement whenever you try to shift the mirror forward and back. Focusing. Exactly. And it's been a problem for a lot of different people. We've tried to adopt a variety of different mirror locks throughout our history, but this is by far the most successful design because it, it, it's truly transparent to the user. Instead of using a slider and a baffle type system, which just allowed the mirror to move based on machining tolerances and friction, we actually support the slider on the baffle using six roller bearings to achieve a perfect fit 
to allow you to move the mirror forward and back without ever it, without it ever moving radially. So that's a Crayford type system. So you've actually got the Crayford focuser sliding up and down on the baffle that's carrying the mirror. That's correct. And this keeps the mirror from tipping as it goes back and forth. It does and holds precise focus horizon to horizon. Precise focus. And you've got a dual speed mechanism for moving the mirror in and out. That's correct. Fine dual focus speed. is critical, so we added a 7 to 1 dual speed focus to boot. So the LX600, we've got the 10, the 12, the 14 inch. The largest one is the 16 inch in the 600 series? That's correct, and it's on our observatory class mount. Want to take a look? Sure. Now this is a prototype. This is the last in the development cycle. This is based primarily on our LX200, and many people are big fans and are very familiar with our 16 inch LX200. We're in the process of adding our F8 optical tube. This is currently the F10 version. And of course, we added Starlock to give it all the ultra high precision pointing and full-time auto guiding features of our LX800 and smaller LX600s. But for the first time in our history, we've actually added a wedge to the 16. It's the first time you've been able to field transport our 16 inch and be able to get it polar mounted and not have to rely on a field derotator or leave it at home permanently, permanently mounted. All right, so you want to tell me a little bit about that? That's obviously all new, the wedge and the tripod as well. Yeah, the wedge and the tripod are adapted from our Max series. So it's a perfect platform to support the weight of such a big telescope. This actually offers an incredible adjustment range and supports the 16-inch perfectly. All right, so in field use, this obviously breaks down into modular components. That's correct. It's five different components. We break down the tripod, the wedge, the drive base, the fork arm, and the optical tube blast. So it looks like two people could easily set this up without any additional help? Yes. So the 16 inch is in the final stages of prototyping. How about the uh, other scopes? The 10, 12, and 14 are essentially done. We're waiting for our final uh, version of firmware, and we expect to start shipping sometime in late May. So those will be going out by the end of next month, you hope? Yeah, uh, we hope. The 16 will take a couple more months. As you know, we still don't have the F8 glass ready just yet, but it'll be following in the months after the launch of the smaller apertures. Wow. You guys have been busy bringing out all the stuff in the last year. We've been working really hard, but it's been probably one of the most exciting years uh, of my time at Mead. I've been there for over a decade, and we're just uh, really enthusiastic about what the future holds and, and what we can contribute to the amateur market. All right. Well, Chris, listen, I want to thank you very much for telling me all about this stuff. I want to congratulate you on your 40th anniversary of supporting the amateur community with all this great equipment. Thank you, Dennis. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope here at the 2012 Meet Conference in Suffern, New York.